morning, everybody. Thank you, Celso. And thank you, Gianni, for inviting me here uh, to this Austrian Palazzo. It really feels a little bit like coming home. So I would like to get the apartment on the top floor here. Um, well, you invited me to give a lecture on pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma versus mass forming pancreatitis. These are my disclosures. And uh, actually, what's the clinical problem? Uh, up to 20% of patients with chronic pancreatitis will have a mass forming type of pancreatitis, which can actually mimic cancer. Also, focal autoimmune pancreatitis or paraduodenal pancreatitis may also mimic cancer. And this problem is also underlined by the fact that uh, if you have chronic pancreatitis, there is an increased incidence of ductal adenocarcinoma in these patients. So how can we differentiate all that? Uh, actually, about 25 years ago, uh, Lohenfels uh, was the first one to describe and how to quantify the increased risk of uh, cancer in patients with chronic pancreatitis. He found that the risk of cancer actually was uh, increased by the factor of 14 in patients with chronic pancreatitis after a five-year uh, follow-up. And just recently, a meta-analysis was, uh, was published which assessed the risk versus the time after the chronic pancreatitis diagnosis. And what they found was two years after the diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis, the risk of having cancer was actually 16 times higher. And you see five years after the diagnosis, it was still 18 eight times higher and it decreased after 10 years, it was 3.5 times higher than the normal population. So the conclusion was, Chronic pancreatitis increases the risk of adenocarcinoma, but eventually, obviously, the risk decreases over time. And to, to underline that increased risk, actually, two studies have been published recently. One, actually, very large public, uh, study with 650 patients, they analyzed all their cases who had undergone surgery for chronic pancreatitis, not for cancer. And they found incidental cancer in up to 2% or 1.8%. You see quite a high increased standard hazard ratio. And their risk factor actually was if the patient had developed de novo diabetes before surgery. That was the risk factor that this patient would have a cancer in this chronic pancreatitis. And a year ago, another quite large study in 252 patients was published where they performed uh, surgery for chronic pancreatitis and not a preoperative diagnosis of cancer had been made, and they found cancer in 7.1% of patients, incidental cancer. And risk factors were if the patient was of old age, if uh, the high preoperative level of, of bilirubin and an increased level of CA99. And the surgical perspective said because there is a high incidence of cancer in chronic pancreatitis, this really underlines the necessity of doing early surgery in all of these patients. But you know, certainly that's the surgical perspective, I would say. What are actually the imaging features of mass forming chronic pancreatitis? Usually it's a hypovascular mass, most commonly in the head, like what we see with ductal adenocarcinoma. Here's uh, two examples, one and two, both having uh, mass forming chronic pancreatitis, you will see pancreatic ductal dilatation, like in cancer, atrophy upstream, uh, common bile duct dilatation. And then there are also some features which may actually help like intraglandular necrosis, as you see here in this patient, really you see central necrosis, something you would not really expect with cancer and calcifications. And I'll come to back to that uh, in, a, in a minute. When do MRI? What would you see? You would see in mass forming chronic pancreatitis a mass which is dark on T1, iso intense or slightly bright on T2, and with gadolinium it's hypovascular, exactly what you would see with uh, ductal adenocarcinoma. As you see, dark on T1 and with gadolinium it's hypovascular. What actually may really help is MRCP. And about 18 years ago, Ishikawa. Uh, published this really, I would say, landmark paper about the duct penetrating sign. And what they found was actually, if you have a mass forming chronic pancreatitis, most likely the pancreatic duct or some side branches 
will penetrate this mass because it's not that densely fibrotic. Whereas in comparison, this is a cancer, MRCP in a patient with cancer, uh, because the cancer is so densely fibrotic, it will abruptly cut off uh, the pancreatic duct and you won't, wouldn't see that the duct actually traverses. And actually, this sign has a quite good accuracy for differentiating between mass forming type and duct latent carcinoma. Or another example here, you see this is a mass in the pancreatic head, hypovascular. You see that the duct already on T2 uh, traverses this mass. And with MRCP, you see this is a chronic pancreatitis and the duct actually traverses the mass. So uh, a duct penetrating sign in mass forming chronic pancreatitis. Are there other techniques which may actually help? Your yes, studies have tried to differentiate with uh, perfusion CT, but you know, you see 60 patients with duct lead and carcinoma, only very few actually with mass forming. And what they found was that the blood volume, blood flow, uh, and, and permeability is lower with, with cancer, and the mean transit time is longer. They even defined a cutoff value to differentiate between the two. The problem is, Actually, it's not only an additional radiation dose if you do radiation, uh, if you do uh, perfusion CT in all of these patients, but the problem is that you have quite a large variability between different CT vendors and between different software or different software versions. So it's quite difficult to define one particular cutoff value because if you use a different software, it will be completely different. So most likely it's a it's a matter of multimodality imaging to differentiate uh, between mass forming uh, chronic pancreatitis and cancer. Or one feature which helps sometimes, you know, usually the mass, masses are larger uh, and you will see sometimes extra pancreatic pseudocysts. Something which I really personally like is sometimes you see a thickening of the right renal fascia as in this case where, when you have mass forming chronic pancreatitis calcifications, if you have diffuse calcifications in this, this mass or marginal calcifications, that, that's a good sign. The enhancement would be stronger, duct penetrating China, uh, sign I already alluded to, and not uh, to forget that with FDG PET, mass forming chronic pancreatitis can be positive, so this really uh, will not help very much. And the double duct sign of dilatation of the pancreatic duct and the common bowel duct, you may see with mass forming chronic pancreatitis and with uh, cancer as well. Here you see a patient with mass forming chronic pancreatitis and you see in this mass here several chunky calcifications, which is actually quite a good sign to say that this is going to be a chronic inflammatory mass and not, not a duct latent carcinoma. Vice versa, if you don't see any calcifications in a newly appearing mass, then you have to be highly suspicious. So here, this is a patient with a chronic pancreatitis. You see a lot of calcifications in the parenchyma. You see also some stones, and you see all these calcifications. Then you see here at the mesenteric root, there is a mass, which obviously does not contain any calcifications and displaces all the calcifications. And this turned out to be a ductal adenocarcinoma at biopsy. And unfortunately, it already infiltrated into the celiac trunk so this was non-resectable at the time of diagnosis. Other studies have tried other techniques to differentiate a combination of perfusion MRI and diffusion weighted imaging in a small series, and they found that uh, the perfusion curves with ductal adenocarcinoma may be slightly different to what you see with mass forming chronic pancreatitis, and the ADC will be lower. You see pancreatic cancer 1.17 versus uh, uh, mass forming pancreatitis 1.47, but there is some overlap. They found quite a good sensitivity and specificity, but if you really look at the raw data, you would see there is some overlap and uh, uh, between the ADC values and the perfusion type curve. So it may give you some hint, but clearly it's not, not the magic bullet. And studies, uh, other studies have also shown that there is an overlap in the ADC values between cancer and focal pancreatitis. And especially you have sometimes difficulty differentiating between cancer and post-obstructive pancreatitis. You see 
this was turned out to be a small cancer, but you see the uh, uh, high uh, signal intensity on DWI in the post-obstructive pancreatitis upstream. Could radiomics help in this respect? Well, some studies have dealt with the texture analysis and actually texture analysis has shown in preliminary studies on ductal adenocarcinoma carcinoma who had been resected with curative intent, that texture analysis features may correlate with the overall survival. And other studies have assessed ductal adenocarcinoma versus neuroendocrine cancer and showed that the imaging features together with texture analysis aid in the differentiation. But actually right now we don't have any data on the uh, differential diagnosis of mass forming pancreatitis versus ductal adenocarcinoma. A very distinct form of chronic pancreatitis which requires a totally different therapy and thus it is important to make that diagnosis is autoimmune pancreatitis where there are two different types histologically and it can present diffuse focal and multifocal and the focal autoimmune pancreatitis may clearly mimic adenocarcinoma. Here you see a big mass in the body or a large mass here in the tail. Uh, sometimes uh, if autoimmune pancreatitis affects other organs, not only the pancreas, but the bile ducts, the salivary glands, the kidneys, it's called IgD4 disease. So if you watch out for extra pancreatic manifestations, that could actually help to make that diagnosis. But quite a large study actually looked at several features. How can we differentiate autoimmune versus mass forming pancreatitis versus, uh, versus cancer? Clearly, it's the extra pancreatic findings. Here, an example, you see this mass here. There's a biliary stent in place, obviously, because uh, the patient developed the bile duct dilatation. And you see there are some uh, fuzzy, hypo, hypodense uh, uh, lesions in the kidney in the right, and also there were some in the left kidney. These are extra pancreatic manifestations of IgG4 disease. Then the diagnosis is quite easy. Uh, some one type actually of um, autoimmune will present with an increased IgG levels, IgG4 levels than if you have this. Uh, autoimmune pancreatitis will also show quite a delayed homogeneous enhancement, like in this case, in the arterial phase, hypovascular, and in the venous or delayed phase, it becomes quite iso-intense. Okay, here you have a very low ADC value and also quite helpful is that you will have a quite irregular narrowing of the pancreatic duct uh, in that stenosis with quite not very extensive upstream dilatation of the pancreatic duct. So uh, quite often it's less than five millimeters, whereas with ductal adenocarcinoma, you will have more severe uh, upstream dilatation of the pancreatic duct. Multifocality is uh, a feature that can really help. Uh, if you look at first glance, you would say, yeah, there's just a mass here in the pancreatic head, could be ductal adenocarcinoma. But if you look carefully, you see there are one, two other small focal lesions in the pancreatic tail, something which would be quite unusual for ductal adenocarcinoma. And the second focal form of chronic pancreatitis which is sometimes tricky to diagnose is a paradudinal pancreatitis, which was called groove pancreatitis uh, before. And actually it's a distinct type of chronic pancreatitis affecting the pancreatoduodenal groove. Uh, clinically, the patient may present with a pancreatic or periampulary mass, duodenal stenosis, pain, or jaundice. And morphologically, there are two different types. One is the pure form, we, are, we are, were, have been aware quite a long time, which affects only the groove here between uh, uh, the pancreas and the duodenum. Sorry, it should be the other way around. This is the duodenum, this is the pancreas. And the second type is the segmental form, which affects not only the groove, but also part of the pancreatic head. And histopathologically, there are also two different types. 
One is a cyst-forming type and one is a solid tumoral type. And if you have a cyst-forming type, then you can make the radiologic diagnosis quite confident, as in this case, you see some microcysts here in the groove and the pancreatic head looks perfectly normal. And uh, another patient with CT, you see some small cysts, some calcifications already here in this chronic uh, groove pancreatitis. If you have a solid type, then studies have shown that the vast majority actually of these patients gets a preoperative diagnosis of cancer and resected for suspected cancer, and it, then it's just groove pancreatitis. And the second form, the segmental form, actually, this is also frequently misdiagnosed as uh, pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. As you see here, you see this big mass, low in signal intensity on T1, and you see it's not only in the groove, but also the pancreatic head is affected. Uh, you see there are some cysts in there, and with C with contrast, you see some cystic areas, but you see that also the groove affected. So you can make a, a, a suggested diagnosis that this is a, a paradolinal pan, uh, pancreatitis, but certainly if you have uh, this mass affecting the pancreatic head, uh, endosonography and biopsy is key really to make that diagnosis. So to sum up, to make the diagnosis of mass forming chronic pancreatitis, this is an important issue because of the increased risk of ductal adenocarcinoma in patients with uh, chronic pancreatitis. And the diagnosis should be based on multimodality imaging, on morphologic features, Think about the duct penetrating sign. Think about the diffuse calcifications or the lack of calcifications in a mass. Um, maybe texture analysis will help in the future to give you more confidence uh, about the diagnosis. And if you have a, uh, in a patient with focal autoimmune pancreatitis and paradodenal pancreatitis, it's really that combination of clinical and lab data imaging features and histology, which helps to make confident diagnosis. Thank you.